Hello and welcome to another installment of FormatCColon.com tutorials. In these tutorials we pick apart and explore topics pertaining to desktop platforms, server administration, network administration, virtualization, web development, and pretty much everything in between. For more in-depth information on any of our topics, please visit our site at www.formatcolon.com where you can find a full step-by-step -step text version of all of the commands and steps performed in each of the video tutorials here, along with tons more videos including tips, tricks, and much more. Hello and welcome to another FormatCColon.com tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to go over installing the Puppet UI dashboard. What the dashboard is for Puppet is exactly that. It's a dashboard that allows us to kind of get a visual UI set up so that we can see the under the underpinnings of what's happening in Puppet, be able to run reports, look at nodes that are connected, um, things of that nature. So uh, let's go ahead and just dive right in. This is a fairly uh, easy installation process actually. Again, all of the documentation for the Puppet UI or the Puppet uh, dashboard can be found right on the Puppet website. Um, if we take a look and just uh, run a Google search on install Puppet, and I will have links uh, at the bottom of the video um, so that you won't have to actually run the search, but um, if I do a install Puppet dashboard, then we can see that we will get documentation on how to install uh, the dashboard. So um, we're going to kind of circumvent uh, this information so you don't have to parse through it. Um, I'm going to have a full step-by-step -step tutorial on formatcolon.com uh, along with this video, and I'll also post links to all the documentation in, in the links uh, section or in the description section below the video. So let's go ahead and just dive in and get this thing installed. So what we're going to need to do is go back to our server, and where we are is we're sitting on the Puppet server that we set up in, a pre in the previous tutorial on installing Puppet. Uh, no other modifications have been made to the server. Um, actually, this video is being taken about 10 minutes after that installation video, so it's uh, still nice and fresh. The first thing that we need to do is we already have the repos installed for Puppet. We can verify that by just doing an ls-lah etsy yum dot yum dot repos.d and we can see that we've got the uh, Puppet Labs repository set up. So the first thing that we need to do is install the Puppet dashboard package. So let's go ahead and do that. And also this is installing the MySQL libs. Uh, we are going to need a MySQL server uh, as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just set that up locally here, uh, but you can obviously, if you have a production web server, or a, I'm sorry, a production database server already, uh, MySQL server uh, sitting around somewhere, then you can absolutely just go ahead and create the database uh, on that uh, host, and then, you know, when we configure the database.yml file to point to the database location, you would just point it at, you know, the host that is your database server, but because we're going to set it up on this server, I'm just going to do a yum install my SQL dash server. And I'm going to go ahead and just start the database service so that I can initialize the database. So that way I'll be able to create the database. So now that the database server is all set up and initialized, all I need to do to enter my SQL is type in my SQL. And that'll bring me to the prompt. And if I do a show databases, I'll show nothing um, other than the default MySQL test and information schema uh, databases. And so what we need to do is we need to create a database. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say create database. And we'll call this the puppet dashboard. And we'll set the character set to UTF-8. Then we need to create our user. And we'll call this user puppet user at localhost. Now note that if you are not uh, running the MySQL instance locally on the local host, then obviously you're going to want to put either the IP um, of the, well, in this case, you would be creating the database on the database server. So you'd want to put the IP address of the puppet server 
um, in this in, in, in between these two quotes. Or you can also just put a percent sign, which is going to be kind of like the wild card. So it'll say that basically it'll accept connections or MySQL will accept connections from Puppet Master at any host. Um, but because we're running all this locally, I'm going to type in uh, localhost here. And then I'm going to do identified by, uh, and we're just going to do puppet pass. How's that? Okay. And the last thing we need to do is set up the grants. So we're going to type grant all privileges on puppet dashboard dot star to puppet user at localhost. Okay, and that uh, that sets up our grants. So now the puppet user has full access to the puppet dashboard database. Uh, once the database is created, we can go ahead and just exit MySQL. Uh, we don't need that anymore. Um, the next thing that we're going to need to do is actually set up the database file um, so that Puppet, the Puppet dashboard knows how to connect to the database. And so uh, the location of that is going to be, uh, we can actually just do a CD or change directory into slash user slash share uh, and then Puppet dashboard. And if we take a look, this is our main application directory. So we're going to want to go into our config directory and we're going to want to edit the database.yml file. And inside of the database.yml file, all we need to do is set up the first production block right here. So uh, we'll still need that information. We set this, we set up the instance as the puppet dashboard. We set the username as puppet user. We set the password as puppet pass and we can also just for uh, sake of sanity here we're going to add a host directive and we'll just specify local host obviously if your database is residing on another server then you'll want to put in the IP address or the DNS name um, of the other host but um, we're running this locally so so let's go ahead and we'll save that um, the other important file to note here is going to be the settings.yml file, but we can just leave that whole entire thing as the default. Um, it's going to work just fine the way that it's it's set up. Uh, now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to change one parameter for MySQL. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to edit the Etsy my.cnf file here, and underneath the MySQL D section, I just need to uh, put in one directive. Um, which is going to be max allowed packet, and I'm going to set that to uh, 32 meg. And then I'm going to, because I have nothing running on this MySQL instance, restart MySQL. Now, if you don't or can't restart your MySQL server, um, what you can do is go into MySQL, and you're definitely going to want to still put that, that entry into the MyCNF file, so that way it'll take effect the next time that MySQL is started. But temporarily, if you can't uh, set or restart the MySQL service because you have other databases on the, on the server, um, then you can actually just type in a global command that will basically set that max allowed packet to the 32 megs uh, for the current running session, right? So if I can't restart the server, then that that's option will still take effect. And the way that I do that is just by typing in set global max allowed packet. And I'm going to set it to the bit value, which is 33554432. And that would also set it in the current running session. So uh, that's kind of like a little tuning thing. Um, once we've got that all tuned, then we need to actually go ahead and populate the database. And so we need to be inside of the application root. So I'm going to just cd into slash user share puppet dashboard, which is uh, the root of our application here. And I'm just going to type in rake gems uh, refresh specs. 
just to kind of avert uh, another error message afterwards. So that just kind of tidies things up for us. And then we're going to type in rake rails underscore environment equals production. And then we're going to do a db migrate. Good. We didn't spell Rails correct. Good old Ruby. For some reason, Rails always defaults to development, so you have to specify production. There we go. That looks a lot better. That populated our database. And so now the next thing that we need to do is actually set up Apache to be able to serve the database or serve the dashboard. So um, we have a temporary file or uh, a example file that we can copy. So let's go ahead and copy slash user share puppet dash dashboard again. Uh, ext passenger dashboard dash vhost.conf. And we're going to put that in Etsy HTTP conf.d. And I'm going to put this as puppet dash dot conf. And then we need to go ahead and obviously edit that file because there's going to be some stuff in there um, that we are going to need to make sure that it's the same to the same as our environment. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And now the first thing is, so we've already loaded the module for Passenger in our configuration file for Puppet. So we actually don't need to uh, load that a second time. So we can just comment uh, this whole first line out and get rid of that. Um, passenger root is also not going to be, that's not correct. That is, we're going to want to change that. So again, let's just save that. And we're going to kind of bounce between the two files here real quick. Um, I'm going to actually just change directories to the conf.d directory and then whoops let's take a look let's grab the location for the passenger root Okay, uh, the next thing is going to be this Rails auto detect. We're going to need to comment that out. That is uh, not supported by Apache 2.2. Also, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set up uh, the dashboard on the standard port of 3000. So I'm going to do a listen on 3000. And then this virtual host uh, is going to also be changed to 3000. And then for the server name, we're going to want to get rid of this whole entire line and obviously put in the server name um, of our host. So instead of it being dashboard.example.com, we're going to modify this to be puppet.mydomain.local. And then we're going to actually add a server alias of puppet. And then we're going to want to fix the error log location. So because we're not using Apache 2, this is CentOS um, or a rel uh, equivalent. The log name is going to be HTTPD. So I'm going to change both of those so that the log location is found. And then also we're going to change the name again here to puppet dashboard.errorlog. And other than that, I think we are good to go. So let's go ahead and save that. Now the next thing we need to do is kind of tie our Puppet uh, Master into uh, the dashboard. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to edit um, the main Puppet configuration file again. So we're going to go vim etsy uh, puppet puppet.config. And again, inside of this main block underneath our environment path,
what we're going to do is we're going to set a couple of variables. The first one is going to be reports is going to equal store in HTTP. The next one is going to be the report URL is going to equal HTTP puppet.mydomain.local on port 3000 and it's going to go under reports and upload. Then we're going to type uh, or we're going to turn on node terminus equals exec. And last, we're going to set the external nodes. And again, the explanation for all this, uh, all these variables can be found in the Puppet Labs documentation. Um, these are just the four statements that are needed in the master section. Oops, bin slash env, and then puppet dashboard URL equals HTTP puppet.mydomain.local port 3000 user share dashboard bin external node and then also under the agent section um, all we need to do because uh, it's obviously running the agent as well we just need to turn on reporting Okay, and then we can save that configuration file. Next, we have to make sure that Puppet can actually know who Puppet is. So right now, if we just do a ping Puppet, um, it doesn't know who that is. So I'm going to set up a host, a host file entry. And all we're going to do here is go to the end and make a new entry for Puppet. So I'm just putting the IP address and then just Puppet. And the reason for that is because uh, some of the reports that run, uh, it tries to just contact Puppet um, on the server and on the Puppet Master, and the Puppet Master needs to know who just Puppet is. So let's save that, ping Puppet again. We see that we get a valid response, so that's good. And let's see if we've got all that stuff set up correctly. Let's do a service HTTPD restart and it did restart clean so that is a, uh, a positive note um, and now we can actually check to see if the service or the server is up and before we do that now I'm gonna open up another window here on my local machine on the client because I don't have DNS set up here so um, my machine my Mac here doesn't know what puppet dot my local or my domain dot local is so I need to set up a host file entry on my local machine and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down here to the very end of my file and I'm gonna again type in another host entry for the IP address of my puppet server and I'm just gonna put puppet.mydomain.local so that way my computer knows uh, where that server lives and then I'm gonna save that file and now I can actually go ahead and open up my web browser and let's test this out and see if this actually works. And kapla, we have the Puppet dashboard up and running. So now uh, what I wanna do is just test out and make sure that the link um, between Puppet, uh, my server, and the dashboard is actually working correctly. And the way that I can do that is to go back to my, my Puppet server, and I'm going to just test the agent. I'm going to type in Puppet Agent Test. 
Oh, and I need to be in the Puppet server, not on my local machine. Okay, let's make sure that uh, we can resolve this. So let's do a uh, ping of puppet.mydomain.local. It does not know who that is. So not even my own server knows who that is. So I need to put in a host file entry for that. So I'm just going to copy this guy and put in puppet.mydomain.local. Make sure, let's try that again. That's better. All right, so now we get, uh, let's see. Looks like we've created a new SSL certificate for myself. Uh, no certificate, wait, okay, so that all looks good. So now because it's the agent uh, that's sitting on the Puppet server trying to talk to the Puppet Master, even though it's itself, it's two different daemons that are that are running the... There needs to be a certificate uh, for the agent portion to talk to the Puppet Master portion. So let's just check and see if there's uh, any certificates that are unsigned. We can do that by typing in pseudo puppet cert list, and we see that there is a certificate in the cert list that does need to be signed. So we can do a pseudo puppet cert sign for this guy. Okay, and so that has been signed. So let's go ahead and try that test again. All right, and we at least have cleared up the cert error, so let's go ahead and restart Apache real quick one time, now that we've put in the host file entry. Oh, it might be right here. There is no user directory. I always go too fast. Need to learn how to slow down maybe sometimes and double check my... So it's USR. Try and see if that fixed it. I'm just going to again restart uh, this just to be safe. And then let's go ahead and rerun the test. And that's looking better. So there we go. Finish catalog, run. Okay, excellent. And now let's go ahead and back over to our dashboard. And now we see two pending requests. Okay, so now we know that the uh, Puppet uh, client on the Puppet server is actually talking uh, to the Puppet dashboard, which is good, so that connection is there. And then the last thing that we really need to do is set up what are called worker processes. And what wor worker processes are is they're the processes that are going to take care of all those pending jobs that are sent to the, the server and, uh, and process those. And so um, that's uh, super easy. All we need to do is make sure first that uh, the directory permissions on the log directory are set correctly. So I'm going to do a chmod 0666 slash user slash share puppet dashboard slash log slash star. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just start my workers. And the way that I can do that is just a single command, uh, sudo dash u puppet dashboard environment spell rails right this time and then user share puppet dashboard script 
delayed job on the dashboard and four which is the number of worker processes that we're going to spawn. Typically, you'll want this number to match the number of cores that you have uh, in your CPU. And then we can start though, that. And that's started, and we can check that those are running by doing a PS ELF and then grep for delayed job. And we see that we've got uh, one, two, three... Uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3, so we've got the uh, the workers running, and if I need to stop those, I can actually do exactly that same command and just type in stop here instead of start, um, but we obviously want those to run, and then uh, we can go back over here and see if that gets cleaned up, and we should see, there we go, so those two jobs have been processed, all systems are a go, and we see that puppet.mylocaldomain has registered uh, with, with the server, or with the dashboard, so... Um, so now we've got our dashboard all set up. Um, there's definitely a bunch of different plugins that are set uh, that are out there that we can kind of tap in uh, or um, add onto the dashboard to give us added advanced functionality. Um, that's kind of outside the scope of this particular tutorial. I just wanted to kind of go over getting the dashboard actually set up and communicating. Um, so that's working. Um, and then also the other thing is that, uh, you know, if you're in a uh, production environment and this is a production puppet server, you may want to go through and set up some sort of a monitoring for the uh, worker processes that we just set up. So you might want to have something kind of monitor those workers and make sure that those workers are running. Because um, if the workers are not running, then, you know, this is not going to work. Like uh, any jobs that are submitted to the, to the puppet server for reporting. Um, are not going to be processed and pushed to the dashboard view. So, um, you know, you definitely want to make sure that those worker processes are working. Um, so you might want to set up maybe something like Nagios or, you know, maybe even something local. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different, like, process watch applications that can be set up on the server that will kind of email you or text you or something of that nature if one of the, uh, if the worker processes uh, die. So that's about all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did enjoy this tutorial um, or have watched any of my other tutorials and um, enjoy those, then please hit the subscribe button below. Also, feel free to leave me any comments, suggestions, uh, feedback, requests, anything in the comment section below. I definitely like hearing from you guys. So with that being said, again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.